So, Hebel, you think you're pretty clever, huh? How come you get to live in that big house by yourself? Orla, I'm not sure I understand where this is coming from. Why are you asking me out of the blue? I had a conversation with Max the other day, and he said that you're living alone in your parents' house. Well, that's true. My parents decided to retire to the countryside for a more relaxed lifestyle, so I'm currently living there by myself. See, that's what I'm talking about. You're so sneaky. You're only 20, and it's quite unusual for someone your age to live alone in such a big house. It's a bit weird, honestly. What do you mean by that? Most people at your age live in small apartments, especially in the city. A house that size is typically meant for an older individual or a family with kids. Not a single person like you. If that's the case, why don't you consider buying a house or building your own? Olivia is about to start school soon, right? Why don't you and my brother find a suitable place and build the house you desire? It seems like a good idea to me. Are you kidding? Do you know how expensive it is to build a house? It would cost a fortune, especially in the city. Besides, Max will be working overseas for a while, so I can't possibly build a house without him. It's a major decision, and there's so much to do. I need him here. Yes, I knew he was going to be overseas for a while. Exactly. So I've been thinking that my daughter and I should have the house. It just makes sense. We could move in this week. I understand it might be challenging for you to find a new place, but if you could leave as soon as possible, that would be great. Wait, what? I know it's the house you grew up in, but it doesn't make sense for a single person to occupy such a large house. It's a luxury for you, but it's a wasted space. So you need to hand over the keys and pack your bags. There aren't many houses like that left in the city and they should be reserved for families with children, don't you think? I don't understand how you can think that. I inherited the house from my parents. It's my house. It does make sense. Besides, I've already decided. I'm your older brother's wife. And as the older one, you should do what I tell you. Seriously? You must be kidding. Furthermore, there's no need to make a fuss about it. The house is also Max's. He grew up there too. It's only natural that his wife and daughter live there. We have just as much right to be there as anyone else. I'm sure your parents would be happy to have their son's wife and granddaughter living there. They would want us to be taken care of especially while Max is away. And what am I supposed to do if you kick me out? Get an apartment like any other single person in the city. You've always lived in your parents' house, haven't you? It would be good for you to experience living on your own for a while. It'll give you some practice for real life and teach you to stand on your own two feet to take care of yourself. I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Even when my parents were here, I contributed to the household chores. I cooked, ran errands, did a lot of cleaning and laundry. I earn my own salary and manage my life. I don't need any practice. I already do everything. You say that, but it's different when you're on your own. Living in your parents' house is just easier, considering the little things. Living alone is a completely different experience. You don't truly know what it's like until you've tried it. It's crucial for personal growth and self-discovery. If you never give it a try, how will you ever know? Um, Orla, last time I checked, you've never lived alone either. I'm pretty sure you lived with your parents until you married my brother. And then you got pregnant immediately after getting married. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you have never experienced living alone in your entire life. This isn't about me and it doesn't matter. From now on, we will be living in that house. I need you to hurry up, gather your belongings and leave. We'll be moving in shortly and I want you go. Max, we need to talk. I just had a talk with Orla and she's treating me horribly. She's not just asking but demanding that I hand over the house. Oh, she spoke to you? She was asking me about the future of the house. What are you saying? Did you know anything about this? The truth is, I was approached by the company to handle some responsibilities in one of their foreign offices. It was unexpected, and I actually left last month. 
I'll be extremely busy and won't be able to return home for about two years. I felt that the house we were renting was too big for just the two of us. It required a lot of maintenance, including the yard, and it was expensive for just a couple. It made more sense to find something more affordable, like a townhome. I set aside a substantial amount of money for them to move and cover rent. I put around $20,000 into an account specifically for that purpose. $20,000? Goodness gracious! Yeah, I know, but you know Orla. She enjoys the finer things in life. She took Olivia shopping and they spent it all. They went on a shopping spree. She used up all the money I had set aside to help them move. Oh my, you're joking. They blew $20,000 just on shopping? What on earth did they buy? Naturally, I got very angry. I mean, it's probably a good thing I wasn't there. Otherwise, I might have lost my temper. But Orla turned it around. She went crazy, demanding that I find her a free house. I started shouting and even cried. It was like she had a complete breakdown. I thought it was impossible. There's no such thing as a free house, right? But then she started bringing up mom and dad's place. I understand that she's putting a lot of pressure on you, and it must be stressful trying to find a new place for them to live. Yeah, I don't know what to do with her. But the more I think about it, the more I realize she might have a point. Now that our parents have moved out, it does make sense for my family to move in. I know you won't like this, but come on, Hebel. I need you to move out and let them take the house. What? Hold on a minute. Have you lost your mind? Are you seriously taking her side? Come on, what are you talking about, taking sides? I'm simply asking you to help my wife. We're family, and you should try to help her while I'm away. It's kind of your duty as my sister. Oh no, it isn't. It's not my responsibility to get involved in your arguments or solve your problems. The house belongs to me and I don't need any roommates. There's no way I'm giving up my home. Well. You should have informed me that you were planning to take the house instead. I had to hear it from mom and dad. They told me that since they moved out, you would be living there all alone. That's pretty sneaky, don't you think? I know you do. And what exactly does that mean? You've been living in our parents' house rent-free, that's what it means. Mom and dad paid the mortgage and taxes, and you got to live there without spending a dime. However you look at it, it's sneaky and unfair. Say what you want about me, but I won't change my mind. I've worked really hard, you know. I've built a life for myself, started a family, and here you are single, just starting out and living an easy life. It's not fair that everything comes so effortlessly to you. That's why I want you to leave. You need to hand over the keys to my family. We're taking the house. Then you'll see what it's really like to be on your own. You'll get a taste of the realities of life and how challenging it can be. Wow, I had no idea you felt that way. If they live in the house, they won't have to worry about rent or a mortgage. We'll be able to save money and have some extra for expenses. We've always dreamt of having a beautiful home of our own, and now it won't just be a fantasy. The company is covering all the expenses while I'm abroad, and I'll have a generous allowance. By the time I return, we'll have saved a significant amount. We can build our dream house wherever we want. So I need you to be the supportive sister and help me with this decision. Hey, Hebel. I know you're busy with work, so I hate to interrupt, but... I wanted to let you know that we accidentally locked ourselves out of the house. Thankfully, we found an extra key to get in. Oh, what happened? Well, Max still had his old keys and we got lucky. We've managed to move our stuff inside, so it's official. We'll be living in the house from now on. Thanks. Hold on a moment. Don't talk down to me as if you've accomplished something. You're being selfish and disrespectful. I'm not being selfish. Max and I both feel that we should live here. We deserve it since he grew up here too. It doesn't matter if he agrees with you or not. That house is mine and I strongly disagree. Stop acting like you own the place because you don't. You're one to talk. You're living here as well. And yet you act like you own the place. How is that any different from me? It's your parents' house, right? 
So it's only fair that your brother's family gets to live here, just like you've been doing. No, the house is solely mine. I'm sorry, but I'm asking you to pack up your things and leave. I want you out of my house. Hate to break it to you, but it's actually you who will be leaving. In fact, I've already put all your things in boxes and placed them on the curb. You should come and collect them as soon as you can get away from work. What? You threw out my belongings? What do you mean? I mean exactly what I said. I packed up your things and threw them outside. I kept the furniture because I like some of them, but the rest is gone. You're lying. It's pouring rain outside. How could you throw my things out in the rain? Who would do such a thing? Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Your things are going to get wet. You'll need to find a warm place to dry them once you collect them. I can't believe this. Is this really who you are? Are you so selfish that you would throw everything I own from my own home and leave it out in the rain like garbage? I've never encountered someone as selfish as you in my entire life. Excuse me, I've been telling you to leave for a week. I gave you enough time to pack up and go. This is all your own fault if you think about it. I feel sorry for you, but it is what it is. We live here now, and you don't. An apartment would suit you better. You're young and single. You'll find something more suitable for your style, something cheap and small. Okay, I'm leaving now. Good. Your things are on the curb, so please collect them and get out of my sight. It looks unsightly to have all that stuff piled up in front of the house, and I don't think the garbage truck will be coming today. You don't have to rub it in. Actually, it doesn't matter that you threw my things out. In fact, it might have done me a favor. I wasn't planning on going back to the house today, now that I think about it. Of course you weren't. It's not your home anymore. It's mine. If you had just left when I asked, it wouldn't have come to this. I pity you losing your home and belongings. Poor thing. Oh, by the way, the water service is going to be shut off soon. Today, actually. What? And the electricity, too. I've already spoken to the power company, and they're going to cut it off as well. It might already be off, but it's scheduled for this afternoon. Since there won't be water or power for a while, you might want to consider going to a hotel to take a shower. Or do you have a gym membership? You could shower there. No water or power in the entire house? Oh, I forgot to mention, the kitchen flooring is all pulled up. It's being replaced, but the new flooring hasn't been installed yet, so it's just bare boards in there. Be careful. I hadn't seen that yet. Yeah, it's quite a mess right now. No floors, no power, no water. But good luck with your meals. You might have to rely on takeout. There are a few other areas of the house under construction as well. If you need any information, you should probably talk to the construction crew. The contractor in charge can provide you with the most details. What are you talking about? Well, now that I've been kicked out, I'm not entirely sure. Wait, hold on. I don't understand what's happening. The utilities are turned off? The kitchen is completely torn apart. What's going on? What have you done? You let yourself in, didn't you? You're there now, right? You can see it for yourself. The house is undergoing renovations. Construction was supposed to start tomorrow, early in the morning. Are you serious? As soon as we arrived, I started gathering your things to move them out. I haven't even been in the kitchen. I didn't notice anything at all. You must have been quite focused on throwing my stuff out if you missed the obvious signs. But why is it being remodeled? Max never mentioned anything about this. I can do what I want with my own house. I don't need anyone's permission or approval. I've told you countless times that the house is mine. The property, the house, everything. You can check the deed and titles. My name is on all of them. Really? I thought this house belonged to your parents. Don't they own it? They used to. However, when they decided to move out of the city, they knew they wouldn't be returning. Since I always loved this house and the area, 
it made sense for me to buy it. After that, I wanted to make a few changes, modernize it, and add my personal touch to make it truly mine. I decided to DIY some of the smaller projects to have some fun and save money. But some tasks were too difficult for me to handle alone, so I hired professionals for the more complicated work. I want to ensure it's done correctly. However, I didn't expect to be kicked out of my own home during the construction process. It's quite chaotic at this point. You said the construction was scheduled for tomorrow, so you mean the house is still unfinished? I haven't had a chance to look around properly. Yes, that's correct. Isn't it obvious? Take a look in the kitchen and try turning on the water in the bathrooms. Until the remodeling is complete, there won't be any power, water, or gas. The kitchen floors are still pulled up, and I don't think the cabinets have doors yet, come to think of it. Oh my god, you've ruined it! What a mess! Nobody can live like this. It's uninhabitable. Well, if you're looking for a house with no floors, power, or water, here's your chance. Feel free to stay in my house. I know I didn't want you to live there, but I'm feeling generous today and willing to let you stay rent-free. Enjoy. You think you're so clever, don't you? Cut it out! Who would want to live in a place like this? Why don't you go find your perfect little house? There are plenty of already remodeled ones available. Or if you're going to remodel this one, have them hurry up and finish it so we can move in properly. Absolutely not. I was happily renovating it for myself, but I won't put in all the hard work and pay for the remodeling just for some freeloaders to enjoy. If you want the construction to continue while you're there, you'll have to handle it yourselves. And of course, you'll have to cover the costs, too. How dare you speak to me like that? I am your older brother's wife. Do you really think it's appropriate to speak to your superior in such a manner? I don't see you that way at all. From what I can tell, you're just someone who's after money and unwilling to share. How dare you? Take that back. I'm so sorry, but try to understand my perspective, won't you? I've been working hard on DIY projects every day after work, putting in sweat equity to create my dream home. And after all that effort, all that hard work, the house was taken away from me. Can't you see why I feel like you're a thief? Why I'd consider you selfish and unkind? You! Don't you talk to me like that! We'll be leaving. We wouldn't be caught dead living in such a mess. Really? Do you mean it? I'd be thrilled if you left. I'm going to tell Max everything. What you've done, how you've ruined the house, and your rude behavior. I'll talk to him right now. Just wait and see. Hey, I heard what you said to Orla. How could you speak to her like that? She's my wife. Wow, and how can you two treat me this way? I'm your sister, for crying out loud. I never expected you guys to actually try and take my house. How come the house is in your name? What's the deal with that? How did you end up with the house all to yourself? It was mom and dad's. It should belong to both of us. What sneaky scheme did you pull off to get it? Are you still calling me sneaky? After everything you guys have done, how am I the sneaky one? There was nothing sneaky about me getting the house. I've told you time and again. Mom and Dad had a conversation with me, and they wanted to ensure equal distribution between us. It was important to them and to me. I didn't just inherit it for free. They sold it to me. And do you have any idea how much money they spent on you? Just you? You've been attending private schools since middle school. And on top of that, think about how much they spent on your clubs, sports, probably a dozen or more that you started and quit when you got bored or weren't any good. They covered all the tuition, fees, bought uniforms, everything. That alone cost far more money than you can imagine. What does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with it. While you were in private school, I was in public school the whole time. I never asked them to buy me expensive sports equipment or musical instruments. I always used the piano at school. Compared to you, I barely used any money at all. Dad noticed this disparity, and before retiring, he wanted to balance things between us. That's why he sold me the house at a fair price. 
balancing things between us. What does that even mean? Dad explained that he spent nearly a hundred thousand dollars more on your education and all your extracurricular activities. He wanted to make things fair, and that's why he gave me a good deal on the house. I wanted to buy the house, and he felt it was the perfect way to equalize things between us. That doesn't feel fair to me at all. It's like we were playing a game where I was blindfolded and you had both eyes open. You cheated. If I had known I could get the house, I would have chosen a cheaper school and less expensive hobbies too. If you have an issue with this, why don't you talk to our parents instead of taking it out on me? They can explain everything to you. They've kept meticulous records for years and they told me that's how they knew how much they spent on you. They've offered to go through it and explain everything. I'm sure they'd be happy to discuss it with you now. I never knew about it and never asked, honestly. But it seems they paid for most of your wedding as well. Well, about that. Now, if you have all this free time to sit around complaining to me, why don't you use it to find a house for your wife and child? At this rate, they might end up homeless. You don't need to worry about it. They've already found a better place to live. One of Orla's good friends is letting them stay at their house. You complain about her, but my wife has some really great friends. Really? Are you sure about that good friend? Because I happened to make a few loops around the neighborhood. I came straight from work to check on the house and make sure everything was okay. Anyway, I was nearby when Orla and Olivia came out of the house. I saw a young guy pull up in his car and pick them up. It was evident they knew each other because he put his arm around her. I just thought you should know. What? Are you serious? Did you recognize him? Who was he? How would I know? But I guess you don't have to worry. If Orla says he's just a friend, then I suppose he is just a friend. Either way, we can consider our issues settled. She's left and the house is mine again, so there's nothing left to worry about. Good luck with your job and enjoy your time abroad. Hebel, I really need your help. Can you please let me in? What's going on? I'm really busy today with my DIY projects around the house since I don't have work. It's Max! He's here! He came back so suddenly and I had no idea he was coming. Oh, I don't understand why that's a problem. He caught me cheating. I have no clue how he found out, but he showed up at the house where I've been staying. He had divorce papers with him and shoved them in my face right then and there. He said he doesn't want a cheating woman. Well, say what you will about my brother. But when he sets his mind to something, he really gets it done. I admit I'm even a little surprised at how quickly he managed to come home and put those papers together. Surprised is an understatement. I thought I would have a heart attack when I saw him standing in the doorway. Oh, you poor thing. It must have been so hard for you. Well, I hope you signed it. Of course I signed it. He told me that if I didn't agree to the divorce outright, he'd sue for custody, and then I'd have to pay child support. What was I supposed to do? That's why I'm reaching out to you now. Please, let my daughter and me come live with you. Why? My boyfriend threw us out. He broke up with me as soon as my husband confronted us. He didn't have a choice. Max got him fired. My boyfriend was the vice principal of the Catholic school downtown. Max called him a hypocrite and a sinner and he was fired on the spot. He had to break up with me to avoid making it worse. We don't have anywhere to go. Well, that's funny. You certainly didn't want to live in my house before. Please, we may be divorced, but I'll have custody of our daughter. I'll be receiving some child support, and I can give you half of that each month to cover our living expenses and rent. We can also help you with your DIY project. We can be very handy if given the chance. Please, let us come live with you. No, I don't think I will. Please never come to my house, not even to visit. What are you saying? Are you really going to throw me and my poor sweet daughter aside like yesterday's garbage? Actually, yes. I have no desire to help you after everything you've done to me. Honestly, I want nothing to do with you at all. I don't need your help either. The remodeling should be finished next month, and when I have my perfect little dream house, I have no intention of letting any woman into it. Wait, just a minute, please, I'm begging you. I don't have anyone. My parents are dead and I don't have any siblings. I don't have anyone I can ask for help. Well, then you'd better get a job, shouldn't you? If nothing else, do it for your daughter. Get your act together for her. With your bold attitude, you can work pretty much anywhere. 
I'm sure you'll find something. Good luck! After a long time, the divorce between Max and Orla was finally resolved. Max gained custody of the children. Due to her financial situation, Orla had to find a job with a salary just enough to sustain her life. Max was fired and had to return to his home country because of his negligence and multiple mistakes, which led to my parents having to take care of his children. The divorce truly destroyed his career. As for me, my job is becoming more stable and prosperous. I have been entrusted with more important positions, 